Hey, it's time for hope and possibilities. And we're looking at a funny word today, agoraphobia, how it really can impact our life. Next on Hope and Possibilities. Dr. Gregory Jans is a best-selling author of over 45 books and the founder of the Center A Place of Hope, voted a top 10 center for depression treatment in the U.S. As the pioneer of whole person care, Dr. Jans is known as the messenger of hope. Now the nation's expert on anxiety, depression, substance abuse, relationships, trauma, and PTSD, here is Dr. Gregory Jantz. Hi, it's Dr. Greg Jantz. What do you think of when you hear that word agoraphobia? Agoraphobia, what is that? Agoraphobia used to mean, now we're gonna expand this definition because this is a anxiety, a form of anxiety that we're seeing a real increase post pandemic. And this is so concerning. I want to spend just a few minutes today talking about agoraphobia. It used to mean, oh, the fear of open places. That's the simple definition. But agoraphobia can also be the fear of being closed in. And it can feel like a panic attacks coming. Now, I, I've got some great notes with some information today I want to be sure to share because agoraphobia, here's what happened. We had the pandemic, right? And uh, people were isolated, locked up, and didn't go out very far. And what we're noticing is the more that a person goes farther away from home and they start to notice something happening. Heart rate goes up. Uh, they start to feel maybe sometimes just that blurry vision, a little cold sweat happening, and you go, wow, what's happening to me? I'm feeling something. And you feel more intense, those symptoms, maybe a headache or it's hard to focus and the heart rate is starting to pound a little bit. That's agoraphobia. If it's something that happens to you each time you go out, let's say you get a mile away from your home and, and you no longer feel, and here's the key, you no longer feel emotionally safe. Emotionally safe is that sense that I'm okay, I can handle things, I can walk through this, but you feel on the edge like you're going to tilt and tip over with these agoraphobia symptoms. Now, we'll talk about the triggers. It can be a long history of chronic stress, like pandemic. It can be a period of time that was um, abnormal in that your routines were off, normal life rhythms were off. <laughs> Does that sound like COVID? Does that sound like the pandemic? And everything changed, and it changed long enough that it created chronic stress in your life. And so the uh, stressful event or multiple stressful events, the person that uh, was in an automobile accident and it was traumatic. The person who lost their job and it came as a big shock and surprise. By the way, right now we're seeing a lot of this. There are layoffs that are coming as a big shock and we're seeing people traumatized by this because they thought, and some companies have used the word, we are a psychologically safe environment, etc. Uh, they wanted there to be emotional trust, but when you do something that is a out of the blue, no warning, it's total shock, uh, that can be a trigger point, all right? Uh, how about a loss? Bereavement, you've lost a loved one, you've lost the job, and there's been a period of time now with bereavement or grief, um, and you've not really recovered from it. You're just like, I just don't feel myself again. And you've noticed that farther away you go from home or you enter into social events it feels like some social anxiety or you find yourself not really willing to go that far it's kind of like are you kidding me three blocks is too far I'm, I'm staying home and you just really start to limit you limit your space that you feel safe in uh, and that would be different for you we know that even witnessing a traumatic event can be a trigger point for agoraphobia I um, have through my life have come across uh, situations where I'm like the first person on an accident um, and I'm the first one there as, as an immediate responder technically I'm not a first responder though I've done some fairly advanced training in first responder training because it seems like I come across accidents and I wanted to be more ready. 
And uh, I remember uh, a motorcyclist in front of me, and I remember uh, that person crashed uh, in my sight, not far from me. And I remember seeing a motorcycle that went up in the air, and I was the first one there. Now, attended to that, got emergency help there, and uh, but it was pretty traumatic in that it happened in front of me. And I saw what this did to this person. And being the first one uh, present. Now, every time I drive past that spot that that happened, I always recall it. I always remember it clearly. I always wonder whatever happened to him. Um, after they, he was taken away and to the hospital. And I always have this kind of emotion that's tied to that certain spot. Okay, so agoraphobia, there could be something you witnessed that was traumatic, and now certain spots, you don't want to go very far, things don't feel safe. All right, now, here's some other interesting history uh, with agoraphobia. Uh, as you know, or may have known, that I wrote a book in the early 90s, uh, Hope, Help, and Healing for Eating Disorders. That was a kind of a classic, it's been revised three times uh, on the topic of eating disorders. And one of the things that we want to look at is agoraphobia and anorexia and bulimia oftentimes go hand in hand. So that's a, a type of a challenge or a mental health issue that we oftentimes will see these symptoms of agoraphobia. If you grew up in a home where there was a lot of emotional abuse, in 1992 I wrote a book on emotional abuse, and what's the effects of emotional abuse? Emotional abuse, uh, where there's a lot of power and control and you're demeaned and you feel oppressed and beat up emotionally, uh, we know that agoraphobia oftentimes can re-emerge or emerge at some point in that person's life. Uh, other, what we call comorbidities, and that doesn't sound too exciting, does it? But uh, that means that there's other, it could be a medical issue. I could have medical issues. I have a low thyroid. I have digestive issues. I could have a, a tough diagnosis like cancer. And uh, now I'm noticing that I can't go very far from home. I don't feel safe. So agoraphobia can have a lot of reasons why we're experiencing it. And sometimes we don't fully understand how that developed. Maybe it developed after a long period of, of chronic stress. And uh, you just seem that you've carried this theme of fear in your life. And it really does feel it's different than a panic attack. Uh, a panic attack. Uh, is uh, you do feel like you're having a heart attack. A panic attack can creep up unexpectedly or it happens all of a sudden, heart's racing, vision's blurry. You feel like, man, and heart's pounding out of your chest that you're going to have a heart attack. You feel like you're dying with a panic attack. Agoraphobia, um, you kind of feel the symptoms coming. It's a slower process. They come, rise up. Um, now, we also know that um, uh, use of alcohol uh, or relying on uh, some medications uh, will see this pattern. Uh, that's true. A person uh, who's really struggling with alcohol use, uh, you, you at times, if it's some other factors, and if they've struggled with a lot of anxiety in their life or social anxiety or generalized anxiety, uh, we may see some of these symptoms of agoraphobia emerge. All right, here's some things that always, always needs to be checked out. Medical, where are the hormonal levels? Estrogen, progesterone, um, testosterone, uh, low uh, out of balance hormonal issues can set that body in a hypersensitive state and you can feel anxious. And so always check that. Um, we always want to look at, is there been any history of heart disease? Is there something going on cardiovascular that needs to be looked at? How about this one? Oftentimes overlooked, food allergies. A person has food sensitivities, food allergies. They are uh, having reactions that can create a sense of anxiety in the body. And then you're more prone. I call it 
I call it tipping. You're more prone to tip into some kind of a panic attack, agoraphobia. Uh, and so this needs to be looked at. What's going on in the body, the gastrointestinal system, the brain chemistry? Uh, we know that chronic fatigue syndrome, mm, chronic fatigue syndrome, agoraphobia, anxiety disorders can go hand in hand. Always look at medication. Is there certain side effects that create anxiety? Sometimes, uh, the medication has a desired effect with some other side effects. So yeah, that always has to be looked at, especially if I'm combining different medications. What does this mix do to me? Uh, we also know that um, a person that is um, struggling with uh, relationship issues, I want to move, kind of move to that. Oh, one more I want to mention. Um, with agoraphobia, um, uh, Parkinson's disease, Lou, uh, uh, Lewy body's disease, the brain, uh, uh, and what's happening in dop dopamine-related disorders. Dopamine is that pleasure chemical, um, and Parkinson's, Lewy body, is a relates back to dopamine. Uh, a lot of other things going on, but it relates back to that dopamine. So you can feel a lot of anxiety. You can feel a lot of um, just uh, always on the edge with anxiety. All right, um, here's history um, to look at. Psychological history. Do I have I ever been diagnosed with anxiety, a post-traumatic stress disorder? I've got a good list here. Uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, as well as um, have I really struggled with suicide ideation and despondency? Um, am I really suffering from anxieties? Uh, since uh, the pandemic, was I or am I currently in, in an emotionally abusive relationship? Do I have emotional abuse in my history? Uh, remember, that's all about power and control. So if I, if it's all about power and control and I get too far away from that home base, I could be triggered, triggered into agoraphobic symptoms. Um, codependency is interesting. If my well-being is dependent upon what I do for another person, I'm codependent and my happiness is tied to another person. Uh, the farther I get away physically from that other person, the less confident I feel, the more anxious I feel. So that's one to look at. All right. We've always got to look at the whole. Let's get to quickly here. Some solutions. Whole person. Um, physical. Uh, what can I do physically? Okay. So exercise or movement is fresh air. This sounds so simple, but so important. Um, doing that uh, 20 minutes of, of walking or that getting that workout and working each day. I don't mean to an extreme, but I mean getting out, getting the movement going. So important. Learning some good breathing exercises. When I start to have agoraphobic symptoms, and I notice that shortness of breath, um, being taught how to realign my breath and reestablish a breathing pattern that is restorative in my body and my brain and I start to feel differently and so there's some great breathing exercises that can be done a nutrition am I just loading up on a lot of junk food or sugar um, am I uh, having a protein in the morning so important my blood sugar levels I can if they're low or I'm hypoglycemic my blood sugar levels low I feel anxious it's a natural byproduct of that. Am I drinking enough water, 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 water? Got to look at that. Um, or fiber. Uh, so, by the way, water improves brain function in the following ways. Uh, improves concentration. Yes, it does. It really does. Um, brain needs a lot of water. Um, we know that uh, it improves blood pressure. So water is super important. Get that liter of water in, reaching for my water. I drank all my water today, so I don't even have a bottle there anymore. So drink your water. And there are some supplements you can use for support as well uh, for agoraphobia. Um, and this is, in fact, if you go to aplaceofhope.com, the website, and just um, uh, I've got some pretty, pretty substantial and lengthy blogs. They're more like a chapter in a book. But I want you to look at the um, whole area of anxiety, are there vitamins or supplements that can help? Just Google that on my website. Uh, you'll see the blogs. Um, we list, I mean, I printed it out. It's pages and pages here. 
of different now I, this is what we call evidence-based research-based and so I list all all that that we know for sure can help but and then other uh, supplements with no cr clinical trials that people uh, kind of um, say that they've been helpful just things that you can consider um, I always suggest work with a healthcare practitioner before you start taking a bunch of things. Um, get a good plan together. Um, the other final I want to mention is relationships and agoraphobia. Uh, if you are in safe relationships, emotionally safe, and you have got three to five close relationships, three that would be more intimate and close, these are keys. Um, we need to have substantial uh, relationships that are trustworthy, that are safe, that we feel safe in. You may have noticed that when I go out farther away from home and I'm with a safe person, I don't tend to have those symptoms or the symptoms are greatly diminished. But if you go out by yourself or with a car full of people that are not necessarily on your safe list, you may notice you're easily triggered and you got those symptoms going on. So the people you're with and the relationships really are powerful. And I want to mention to the spiritual side, what we believe in faith uh, can be very healing. And this is something we always look at here at the center, a place of hope, uh, looking at the whole person. And I just want to share from personal experience that I know even for me writing down remember the old-fashioned here I got some the old-fashioned three by five cards uh, writing down an affirmation writing down a, a verse or a scripture um, something that really works to renew the mind um, can be very very powerful and uh, saying that out loud uh, it's just a way of relighting truth and I like to say relighting realigning God's truth uh, in our life. But realigning truth can be very powerful to our emotional well-being. So again, it's just one piece of the whole person. We want to look at the whole person and uh, begin to repair and restore that whole person. Even though we're seeing a lot of agoraphobia, there is uh, certainly hope because hope comes when we have a plan. We want to put together a plan. Sometimes we need to get to some root causes. Was there trauma? in life that was significant um, and you've been living with anxiety and depression for a long time we've got to get uh, to core issues as well all right there's hope and agoraphobia as we see these numbers increase uh, you may have a loved one or you may know somebody who's really struggling with uh, agoraphobia type symptoms and this is though anxiety is the number one diagnosis right now anxiety is number one followed by depression, followed by anything related to addiction. Addiction is really, really, really growing, all forms of addiction. But anxiety, and we're living in a time where there's anticipatory anxiety. We're anticipating like the next bad thing each day. And sure enough, the next day, uh, out there in social media or the news, whatever, it's like the next bad thing did happen. So we're always anticipating it, anticipatory anxiety. All right, behind me over my shoulder, I'm just noticing I do have the book, The Anxiety Reset. And sometimes we really got to work on resetting our life. And if you haven't taken the questionnaire there on a, a place, a place of hope, uh, dot com, there's a, a tab that says uh, depression and anxiety test. The anxiety one is pretty thorough, pretty lengthy, it takes a little bit of time, totally confidential, it's up to you uh, if you want to share the results, but it's a good place to start to gather more information. There is hope.